everybody. My name is Boski Savla. I'm a technical marketing manager at VMware. Most organizations today have teams that are managing, running, or operating platforms that cater to modern or cloud-native workloads. Now, platforms like Kubernetes, for example, are great for running agile, fast-paced, and more dynamic workloads. Development teams love them for the flexibility that they provide. Kubernetes does so using uh, infrastructure abstractions and automations. Now, these abstractions are great because that's what gives application teams the ability to create dynamic applications, change them at a pace that is desired by your organization. Now, for operation teams that are managing these or creating or building these stacks across multiple cloud endpoints, the challenge is integrating individual components that are needed to stand up a Kubernetes stack. Now, to run an efficient Kubernetes stack that developers really like, one needs to have integrated infrastructure from a compute network and storage perspective. Now, with multiple teams having different clusters spread across multiple cloud environments, different cloud endpoints have different way of identifying those infrastructure endpoints. So for example, a virtual machine in vSphere is actually an EC2 instance in AWS. At the same time, it could be something completely else in Google Cloud. Operation teams that are provisioning a Kubernetes stack will have to figure out what components to use, how to integrate these components, and also how to upgrade a stack once it's stood up. Now, this can be a challenging exercise in itself. On top of that, imagine having identity access into these individual environments for development teams to, in order to access the Kubernetes API. Now, if you think about it, AWS has its own identity and access management. Google will have its own. vSphere has its own. So how do operation teams manage identity and access management into these different environments? At the same time, development teams also need self-service access into these environments or the API. They don't really want to wait to get to IT or get to operation teams or file a ticket just to get API access into these environments. Now, this is where Tanzu Mission Control comes in. Tanzu Mission Control caters to both the operation teams as well as development teams. What it really helps to do is bring together a unified view of all the life cycle needed to manage and maintain a Kubernetes cluster. For the operation teams, this is very important and critical. Now, at the same time, Tanzu Mission Control also gives a policy engine for operation teams to provide consistent policies of identity and access management. At the same time, it gives single sign-on access to development teams that need access to the API. Now, let's take a quick look at how Tanzu Mission Control does this. So I'm going to jump into the console of Tanzu Mission Control as an infrastructure admin. You will see Tanzu Mission Control allows you to deploy applications into a cloud provider of your choice, or even bring in existing Kubernetes cluster under its hood. So we have Kubernetes clusters that were provisioned in Azure, AWS, vSphere, or even Google Cloud that Tanzu Mission Control can allow you to see. Now, once these clusters have been brought together, operations team can then group together these clusters into cluster groups. For example, we have cluster groups that are identified according to the different pipelines a development team may have. What the operation teams can do is get into policy and apply a unified identity and access control for the set of clusters to a given user group or a given set of users. Now, within the development cluster group, we have Azure, AWS, and vSphere clusters that are part of this group. Now, these different clusters are all operating applications from a development standpoint. And we are going to give a set of users access to this particular cluster group. Now, before I do that, let's jump into a user that's actually a development user and see what Tanzu Mission Control Console looks like for that user. As you can see, I have no access to any clusters, and I need operation teams to give me access. Let's go back into our operations console and give Tanzu Dev user access to all the clusters that are part of this cluster group. We go into creating a new role binding and then add Tanzu dev user as a cluster admin. Now, once an operation team has done that, we can go back into the Tanzu dev user. Now you can see that Tanzu dev user has access to all the cluster that were only part of the development group. What has happened in the background is Tanzu Mission Control has carried over this identity into each and every cluster that's 
in Azure, AWS, and vSphere. And given those clusters, identity information to allow login from Tanzu Dev user one. So this is how Tanzu Mission Control helps operation teams kind of bring together identity and a unified policy, at the same time giving development teams single sign-on access to Kubernetes API that they need. To learn more about Tanzu Mission Control, please log on to cloud.vmware.com. Thank you.